Kevin Raymer's forecast has received the American Meteorological Society's broadcast seal of approval. Please excuse our technical difficulties. I just wish you could see my smiling face tonight because I'm grinning ear to ear after a beautiful sunny day like today. Hard to believe that it's the last week of February and we're talking 74 degrees on the Grand Strand. That's why I live in South Carolina, folks. 70 degrees, uh, the high today in Florence. Very, very nice and very, very warm. Now you see the southeast satellite picture with all those clouds moving on east out over the Atlantic. That's all part of a cold front that has gone through South South Carolina already, and it's now down through central Florida. You notice on the satellite radar combination, very heavy thunderstorms showing up in the dark green and yellows there across central Florida. Those are severe thunderstorms. They moved through Sarasota, Florida, and around Avon Park and Lakeland today as a result of that strong cold front. Now, we're not getting any real cold air back behind the front yet. Mostly just a west wind right now, and that's drying us out. The relative humidity right now on the beach and inland is down to 17. That's 17 percent. So we are seeing very dry air on those west winds. You can see from this picture that the clouds are beginning to clear out across South Carolina and North Georgia in, in the clear pretty much. Now notice to the north across the Great Lakes, there's some green on our map there uh, with those clouds across the Great Lakes. That's some snow falling over the Ohio Valley as that low pressure area works its way through New England. You can see the cold front trailing from that low now down through central Florida. That's the front that went through our area. Now we're getting the dry air. The west winds behind the system and that front will continue to work on down through south Florida. There's another system developing now just west of the Texas Panhandle, a little low pressure trough. That system will start cranking up and uh, start moving east. That'll probably bring us a chance of rain back in here by about Thursday and on into about Friday morning. Then I think we'll get it out of the picture in time for the weekend to be a fairly nice one coming up next weekend. So that certainly is some good news. As far as the rest of the nation is, uh, is concerned, it's mostly uh, fairly nice across the central plains and then across the Pacific Northwest, partly cloudy skies. A little bit of rain now moving into parts of northern and central California, and some of that will turn into snow as it moves on across the San Gabriel Mountains and into some of the higher uh, mountain tops. Let's check on right now that fish and game forecast and show you what's happening in this area. If you're going to try that uh, hook, line, and sinker routine for uh, in the morning, the best time is going to be around 2 a.m., and that'll be a good range for you, and then we'll see another good peak around 2.30 tomorrow afternoon. Nothing really excellent, but good's not bad, right? 2 in the morning and 2.30 tomorrow afternoon. Here's our fishing hotline if you want real specific information for some of the area lakes and rivers and streams right around your neck of the woods. Let's find out what the forecast is calling for tonight. Fair and cool on the beach with a low temperature of 40 degrees. Fair and colder inland with a low dropping about 34 degrees. For tomorrow, going to be a mostly sunny day, not as warm as today, about 60 degrees on the beach, so that's still very pleasant, and near 60 inland areas. As we check out that five-day forecast, the sunshine will continue to linger on Wednesday, but notice the cooler temperatures. Overnight low 29, the high 56. Then we're back into some cooler weather with some rain moving back in here on Thursday, maybe into Friday morning. And then we clear it back out just in time for the weekend, Saturday and Sunday looking good, but a lot cooler than what we saw today, Wayne and Jerry. Kevin, thank you very much. It seems like the weather is definitely changing over the next few days and through the next week and whatnot. All right. Thanks a lot, Thanks, Kevin. Kevin. We'll be right back after this. WPDE TV 15 and Hardee's would like to recognize the hardworking men and women of our area with the 15 Breakfast Club. Every Thursday during our morning newscasts, WPDE will broadcast live from a local business serving delicious Hardee's biscuits. If your workplace would like to be a member of the 15 Breakfast Club, send a request along with your name and phone number to 1752 Highway 501 Myrtle Beach or 3215 South Cashew Drive, Florence. Please include the total number in your workplace. 15 Breakfast Club, recognizing the men and women of our local workforce. February 26th is drawing near the big day when TV15 hands over the Watch It Win Grand Prize check of $5,000. Gerald Davis of Hartsville. Just watch WPDE TV15 weeknights between 4 and 8 when you see this logo on a 1 800 number call. The 15th caller becomes qualified to join Kevin Raymer live February 26th for the $5,000 Grand Prize drawing. Watch It Win weeknights between 4 and 8 on WPDE TV15. WPDE TV 15, available on Channel 68 in Myrtle Beach. Well, we did have some severe weather in South Carolina last night um, and throughout the southeast, actually. Much of Georgia was hit as well, too. Our ABC affiliate station in Atlanta filed this report. 
Monroe resident Hattie Robinson says it's hard to believe that nobody was hurt with so much property damage. The tornado cut a path five miles long and four blocks wide through the county seat of Walton County. Homes and businesses hit hard. Diane Swain lives in the Radford Park Public Housing Community just a couple of blocks from downtown Monroe. We just prayed, prayed the Lord. We prayed. And I'd be, I, we prayed. That's all I said. I said, Lord, don't take us now. Please don't take us. And don't, just don't let this house blow over on us. Among the businesses, this furniture store leveled. Other business owners cleaning out their valuables. Some say they don't know whether they'll be able to go on. Hairstylist Rita Hamby. My husband and I both work here, so it means we're out of work. <laughs> you got elsewhere to go? Not yet. It's just sad to see something, you know, that they've worked so long and so hard at. Despite all the property damage, people are thankful. This is 75-year-old Elvin Waldrop. His children came from Jonesboro and were so relieved to see that he's okay. It's rough. They were lucky. We was lucky, so enough. We was lucky, wasn't it? So was lucky. Okay, very good. So we did, it was some terrible weather throughout the southeast, and I know that the upstate and uh, South Carolina, there were 60 mile an hour winds that hit, uh, several hundred, maybe several thousand people were without mm -hmm. electricity for at least an hour in several yeah. parts of the state last we night. We pretty much lucked out in yeah, our particular did. area. Exactly. And I feel bad because I was going to complain to Kevin. I was going to say the reason I didn't let Kevin on air tonight was because <laughs> I spent the weekend wanting to go out on the beach, and it was cold and rainy, and I stayed inside this morning mm -hmm. when I get up and get ready to leave Surfside. Beautiful sun's out, so I was going to be angry with him, but I didn't realize the severe weather that was taking place in the yeah. upstate, so I guess we were kind of lucky. Here. Speaking of weather, I've been under the weather a little bit. Still, I'm just a little bit, but I have plenty of time to watch that All-Star game. Did you enjoy that? Yeah, that picked me up a little bit. But co-MVPs, co is that the co first MVPs, time? Co-MVPs, Malone and Stockton, and NBA still on their All-Star break. They begin play again Tuesday night yeah. when the Hornets will try and make their first really official playoff run. The first time really at the All-Star break, we can say mm -hmm. the Hornets are going to make their playoff run. So, of course, we'll keep you updated on that. And the big story tonight, the Chanticleers are in Charleston. As we speak, Mr. Ken Slats on the highways heading down right. to Charleston to get you highlights of that ball game tonight. So make sure you tune in on the, at the night beat tonight. Plus, Francis Marion playing Newberry. That game starts at 7.30, so if you live in the PD, you still have a chance to get to the Smith Center to check out the Pats, and they're playing well. Like I said, Marcel Boggs, 26 points per game wow. last week mm. was the Peach Belt player, uh, player of the Week, so you might want to check him out tonight. Lots of college hoops there. Mm -hmm. All right, of that thanks, exciting. Bob. Thanks a lot. That does it for our 6 o'clock report. Thanks for being with us tonight, and join us on the night beat at 11. We now join ABC's World News Tonight.